Hey, what's up, you guys? Let's talk Rampage. We started off with Keith Lee and Dustin Rhodes versus Matt Menard and Angelo Parker. Now, that first 10 minutes was um, both Matt and Angelo going against Dustin. And I'm going to be honest, Dustin is a really great worker, but he has a much slower pace than Keith Lee in the ring. So that first 10 minutes was much slower than what we normally get with an opening match on Rampage. Usually with Rampage, those opening matches are much more high energy type matches. And this time around, I'll say that wasn't the case. Now, that's not a bad thing, but it's just different than um, usual. Now, um, really, when I look at Matt Menard and Angelo Parker, I'm, I'm like, they're there to collect a check. And I guess there's nothing wrong with that. They're great workers, too. We get to see a lot of great um, tag team chemistry with them in this match that I don't remember normally seeing with them. Because it's been a while since we've seen these two in the ring. They're usually just walking around with Chris Jericho. Um, after... Uh, Dustin finally gets uh, to tag Keith into the match. The whole dynamic of the match really changed where the pacing of the match went way up and it became a little bit more enjoyable um, since that first few minutes just was pretty slow. Now Keith Lee does end up taking the win for his team and while I do think that the match was decent, the pacing kind of killed me. I'm just so used to seeing much better pacing show, I mean, matches um, to open up Rampage. Now, after that, we have QTV. We have QT, who's apologizing um, to everyone about what happened with Hobbs. And he says that on Collision, he's going to make sure he fixes things. I don't know if he's going to try to get Hobbs to come back with them. That better not be the case. Um, but he definitely seemed to want to have some type of talk with um, Hobbs. So we'll be seeing that on Collision tomorrow. We also have uh, Johnny TV, who basically announced that it's going to be him and with QTV uh, versus the acclaimed and daddy ass. And I'm not going to lie. I don't really know if this story is really clicking for me. Um, I, I hope we get a good match out of it. But the story, I don't know, something about it is falling a little flat for me. So up next, we have Taya Valkyrie versus Izzy McQueen. This match was over in less than 30 seconds. Oh my god, I can't stand when I do things like this. I don't even think Izzy even touched her with, with a finger at all in this match. Um, it was over so quickly. Now, right after that, we do have Tony Storm and Soraya come out. And they're coming out to let Tyre know that she's such a loser. And one of the reasons why she's a loser is because she's from Canada. Um, at this point, um, everyone might as well just take out mortgages in Canada because it don't even seem like they're leaving anytime soon. Um, I do believe that this might be their last week in Canada. I'm not 100% sure. Um, honestly... This whole thing was a setup so that Taya can challenge Tony uh, for the AEW Women's Title for the Battle of the Belts um, uh, tomorrow after Collision. And I'm gonna be honest, I didn't like the way this happened because it seems like, well, it felt like Tony came out for no apparent reason. And um, you're gonna call her a loser and not expect her to um, challenge you for the title, or whatever. Something about it just didn't feel as organic. Had this had happened. Um, maybe backstage it could have set this up in a better way so it could have feel um, much more better rather than it seemed like Tony coming out there for no reason so we're going to get that match tomorrow and I think that's the first time um, these two girls have ever locked up um, so that'll be really interesting to see how well their chemistry would be but definitely Taya will not be winning that title if that happened that would be a miracle right um Right after that, we got Hook. He's sitting at a restaurant and he is announcing that the FTW title will be on the line on Dynamite versus Jack Perry. Um, really interesting. I didn't see this happening so quickly. Um, something tells me that Hook might lose this. If he loses um, this title, uh, this would be a really good opportunity for Hook to pick things up as far as his heel character goes um I, I just didn't expect this match to to come up so quickly uh so we'll see what happens on dynamite up next we have trent beretta versus lance archer we do have jake the snake roberts ringside and it's great to always see jake now first things first 
Um, it, the match starts off a little bit slow for me. Um, that's okay because it did pick up after a few minutes. Um, but it really seemed like it was going to be a squash match because uh, definitely Lance Archer was dominating those first few minutes. Then Trent kind of got a little bit of an upper hand. And then we have Jake the Snake who um, attacks Trent Beretta. And guess what? The crowd was cheering about it. Um, honestly, I would too, you know, just to see Jake doing something or whatever. Um, so they cheered about him attacking um, Trent Beretta. And then for a while, we do have Lance who was dominating this match. And then it went a little bit back and forth or whatnot. Um, I'm not going to lie. Trent Beretta is super talented to me. I remember when I was in college, I had like a huge crush on him. Um, he He's great in the ring, but lately... It just feels like he's there just collecting a check. And I don't want to say something is wrong with that. Because it seems like a lot of wrestlers over there are just collecting checks. But um, he's someone that I think that he can, you know, be holding an international title. Or perhaps a TNT title. He does need a little help getting some personality out there. Um, but what he does in a ring is really, really great. Um, but uh, Lance Archer to end up taking this win after giving a devastating lariat to um Trent Beretta after that match uh we have Chuck Taylor I'm not I'm not even trying to be shady but it's like Chuck he I don't I don't get it I don't even know why he's there but Chuck comes in to help Trent Lance attacks him and um Lance get on the mic and he's like look Orange if you don't bring your ass out here specifically he said I'm gonna keep beating these bitches up and um, after a couple of seconds, here comes Orange Cassidy coming out with his backpack. Oh my God, that's so annoying. And um, Lance snatches him up while we have Jake who takes the um, backpack away from um, Orange Cassidy. And then we have Jake gets on the mic and he's like, Oh, you know, if you want this back, you're going to have to beat Lance for it. He gave a much more detailed pr promo, which I really did enjoy. Um, he's still really, really great on the mic. He did have a little bit of a hoarse vo voice. So um, at times, maybe it might have been a little bit difficult to hear him on the mic. Um, but um, he did give a good promo. And I enjoyed that we have Jake, who's there. And, and let me just say this. Jake the Snake should be doing like master classes on um, heel psychology. People should be freaking lining up. If you are lacing any boots, you should be lining up to hear from somebody like Jake on how to master psychology, not just as a heel, but as a wrestler, period. And, you know, I'm hoping that Jake isn't just somebody who's just accompanying Lance Archer to the ring. I hope AEW will use him to the full extent so that, you know, these guys and girls in the locker room could really learn something from him. Anyway, I'm interested in seeing this match tomorrow uh, with Lance and Orange Cassidy. I don't see Lance taking the win, but it'll be really interesting to see what uh, type of match that they have going. But I don't think that it would be a bad idea to put a title on Lance either, um, especially with Jake on his side. Uh, I think they do got something going. So up next, we have Takeshita versus Mentalo. Uh, we do have Uncle Don coming out with Takeshita. And surprise, surprise, that those boos that he's been getting drowned with, um, he doesn't really get that. And I kind of didn't like that. I'm used to them booing the hell out of him. Um, so I wish that would have been the case once again. Uh, but he's letting everyone know that, uh, once again, Kenny Omega ain't shit. And uh, Mentala, who is a Canadian wrestler who has trained and uh, worked with um, uh, Kenny Omega... Uh, he looks at him as a friend. So he's like, well, if you're a friend of Kenny Omega, um, you're going to get your ass whooped. So he sends Takesha to kill Mentalo. And let me just say this, you know, I thought it was going to be a squash match over and like less than a minute. But to be honest, this was a great match. It was short, but really, really great. And my only complaint about this was that it wasn't longer. I do feel like you know, the length of a match really does matter. I know this is really something just to help put Takeshita over. 
Um, but man, it had this had gone another five minutes or so, I really think that, you know, it could have been, you know, match of the night type of situation. Now, we do have Takesha throughout this match working a knee injury. Um, I'm not really sure if he's really hurt or whatever, but that's definitely going to come off as a weakness uh, for the Blood and Guts match on Wednesday. Uh, so we'll see how that goes, but it was a really great match. Now, Mentolo, I'm not going to lie, I don't really care for his look, and that struggle ponytail is just awful, uh, but he's great in the ring. I don't know if we'll see him again in um, AEW, but I really wish he had a much longer opportunity to show how great he is in the ring. Uh, I'll definitely be looking out for him in the future. So up next, we have the Dark Order doing a backstage promo. They crying about not being shit in AEW and how no one takes them seriously, including their friend, Hangman Adam Page. Now, Adam Page, he's been hanging out with the Elite and he's never really expressed that he's not friends with the Dark Order, but he's definitely had a competitive nature with them since he's been with the Elite. So now they're basically saying that they want to know for sure if hangman is down with the dark order or not because they don't have time for fake friends and let me just say this though the dark order they have improved with their promos and stuff like that with their presence in um aew and in roh however when it comes to adam page i never really felt like adam has been a true friend to them you know and I, I always wonder, like, is it just me seeing this or, or not? I've never really felt like he was a true friend to them. Um, and I felt like it's it's been quite some time before they're finally catching on. And there's definitely some jealousy with him hanging out with the elite or whatnot. And that's when they're starting to realize that Hangman is not really uh, perhaps a real friend to them. And I'm just like, boy, it's been like that for a while. Um... Now, it's interesting because with the Blood and Guts match, people are saying that the Dark Order might get involved um, and um, help BCC or help Don Callis and be part of Don Callis' um, family or whatever. Um, that would be really interesting. However, um, I don't think that's consistent with what's going on in ROH with their storyline in the with the righteous and they're probably one of the very few people within roh and aew to have two different storylines going on um so i i don't know how if they're you know getting involved in that blood and guts match how that would coincide with what's going on in roh with them so it's going to be interesting to see what's going on i think the issue here really is how tony khan's going to be able um, to book this where they have um, one group being part of two different stories and how both of those stories could connect. That's going to be the issue here when it comes to tell me. Main event time, we have Athena versus Willow Nightingale. This is for the Owen Hard Women's uh, Tournament. This is for the semifinals. They did put it off because Willow um, last week was not cleared. Um, so I'll say this. Um, I enjoyed the match, probably the best match of the night. Um, I was expecting a little bit more because they did have a match, uh, a couple of months ago on ROH for the ROH women's title and they really nailed it. I really enjoyed that match. I was kind of hoping for the same type of energy or whatnot. Um, it was slightly, you know, down with the energy, but it was still really, really great. Um, Athena, she's always in character. She's always, um, almost flawless in the ring. And I really enjoyed her. Uh, with that being said, she does have a streak. She's like 48 and oh, something like that. Um, and I was like, you know what? Athena's not going to lose this. Surprise, surprise. Willow takes the win with a roll up. Oh God, I hate that. Um, she won, you know, so congrats to Willow, but I did not see this happening. Um, I, I've been feeling like Athena's been on absolute fire in ROH. She is literally, in my opinion, the best women's um, champion that AEW, yes, I'm saying AEW, has ever had. She's put the work, the characterization with 
um, her being a heel is spot on. Everything that she does, you can tell is really, really calculated and she's doing such a great job at it. I can't say the same for um, Tony Storm. Tony, she's great, but um, the whole outcast thing does kind of um, puts her down a little bit. You know, with the constant interference and things like that. Athena doesn't do that. Athena, I don't even really ever remember her seeing her cheating in her matches. You know, she'll do those heel tactics, but it's it's always her giving 110% every single time and taking the win. So she, does, she, com she doesn't compare to the other women that are champions in um, AEW right now. So... Um, if you're not watching ROH, you're not going to understand what I'm talking about, but we've all seen, um, Athena, whether she's Athena or Ember Moon, she's absolutely a great worker. So I really thought she was going to take the win. Willow took the win. Um, so we're going to see, um, Willow versus Ruby Soho tomorrow on Collision. And, um, that's where the final. So I'm really excited to see what's going to happen on Collision and Battle of the Belts tomorrow. It seems like it's going to be a great night. I know Impact got a, a pay-per-view tomorrow. Um, that that right there was kind of interesting to me too, but you know I'm more invested into AEW, so I can't wait to see what happens. And then we got Blood and Guts next week, so that's going to be um, really interesting. Uh, I really hope it puts an end to that storyline. I'm kind of over it. But guys, thanks so much for watching my review. If you didn't watch Dynamite, I'm sorry, if you didn't watch Rampage, um, there's some things worth watching and some things not worth watching, but definitely check out Collision and Battle of the Belts. I do feel like we'll see some things that will definitely, uh, make some changes within the atmosphere in AEW. Thanks for watching. Bye.